Hey, hello, how are you? I hope you're all doing wonderful and fine and amazing. So my name is Mendel, Mendel Beidelei. I'm a mixing mastering engineer and a composer from the Netherlands. And today I'm gonna to try to write a song on the spot. So I know a lot of you Wacom uh, users are like into graphics design and arts and that kind of stuff. And since I'm using a Wacom tablet for audio kind of stuff, I thought perhaps we could meet like a common ground uh, somewhere in the middle. So hopefully some of you or a lot of you like anime. I grew up with a lot of anime and I always liked the music, like the intro intro music that's like almost like metal or pop punk kind of ish. So I'm gonna try to write something similar to that and perhaps give my own flair to it. Basically, just have fun with you guys and record some music. Just to give you a heads up, I'm first gonna try to record and like write the, like this, this song basically. Not like a full song, but some intro is with a chorus. And then I'm gonna show you how, how I would like mix guitars and bass and perhaps some leady kind of stuff in the song. Enough talking, let's get right in, here we go. For those who are wondering about my guitar tone that I will use, this is a device it's called the Quad Cortex. And I have a profile of an amplifier called the Mesa Road King 2, which is one of my favorite amplifiers of all time. So that's in this device and it goes straight into my audio interface into the PC. All right, so here we are in my DAW. Uh, this is my digital audio workstation called Cubase. And I basically do everything with my tablet. So um, if you want to join along like with my workflow, um, I have the middle mouse button like on the larger button of the pen. And the cool thing with Cubase is the middle mouse button lets you roam freely throughout the whole project. So for example, if I zoom in a bit, basically like this, perfect. So basically the idea in my head I have is this thing. Or perhaps even instead of do. That's kind of riffy. And I want to have like an up-tempo like beat to it. So, what the, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to program drums for my idea. So let's get a block in here. There we go. And I'll do a count in like one, two, one, two, three, four. Something like that. Something to get like the blood pumping or something like that. Something like that. And then I'll do like a typical drum beat that's like something like dun kan pakken, dun 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 takken, dun 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 takken. Something like, like that bit of cashmere, like that Zeppelin vibe, but faster. I think this. That, so we'll do some crashes here. So how does this feel? Cool, okay, so I'm gonna duplicate that. Just like so, and then duplicate this whole thing. So first I'm gonna check, like replay it, and most important thing, see how it feels before I record my riff. So I'm not gonna record yet, but just like how it feels, the tempo. Okay, sounds fierce, sounds aggressive, I like that. I do think this could be changed instead of like um, two, one, two, three, four. It would need a punk beat, I think, like dun da dun da dun da I'm not sure about it, perhaps later in the song. But for now, let's first keep it with the original thing. And I'll do something like this over here. Something like that. I like that idea. I don't want to forget it, so I'm gonna record it now. So what I like to do is record my guitars four times, so two performances for the left speaker, 
two performances for the right speaker so I can get this really massive thick wall of guitars. So let's first try to do the left one. So I made a mistake, but I like that. I did. So I'm going to keep that in there. I'm just going to re-record it because I can play better. Now I'm going to do the second guitar. Okay, that sounds cool. So it sounds really full when you listen closely to it. Like this is one guitar. And when I unmute this one, you'll hear it sounds thicker. Sounds really cool. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the right guitar. I made a mistake, but the first round I got it right. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, now let's take a listen to it. Okay, so now the second round I'm doing the same thing, so I'm just duplicating this whole performance. See again how it sounds. And I think there could be like a, f a drum fill here or something. Something like that. Do the same thing here, like perhaps like a flam, like two snare hits close together is called a flam. Like track tune and then ta 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 ta. Something like that. Yeah, that sounds cool. Now to get more vibe in it, I'm gonna program some bass guitar underneath it to like pick up that fat low end. So now with all the guitars we have this. So since the second riff is the same thing, I'm not gonna duplicate that. So this is the bass line together with the drums and the guitars. Cool. So now I think I'll do some added guitar lines. So I'm gonna add two guitar tracks here. I'm gonna call this lead L and lead R. And I want just to make this part a bit less boring, I'm gonna try some like. And like flick my whammy bar. Something like that, I'm just gonna try something. Taking off like this is gonna be in the stereo field. I wanna have one on the left ear a tiny bit, not fully to the left, but 50% to the left, and one a bit to the right. Okay, that sounds better. So the whole thing.
cool. And now let's do like a build up thingy to the chorus. So we had this here. <laughs> Something like that, right? And then perhaps like a stop, like. And then everything goes open and I have like a big chorus. So let's do like a build up thing. So one hard hit with crashes. And then let's build it up. So that. And then snare. And a low tom. And then build it up. So this is how hard it's hit. So now we should have like a hard crash and then like, like build up tension. Okay, so I don't like the kick there. So I'm gonna remove the kick. Cool. And then I know I'm gonna do a chorus and I'm gonna do something big open. Why not add some 8-bit kind of stuff there? But Okay, so I'm just gonna program my idea I have in my head, just get my idea out there. Just like so, one, two, three, four, one. Something like that, like big and epic. Just like so, okay. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, awesome, I'm down. So I'm just gonna copy that so when I get to that point, I don't have to reprogram everything again. So it should be good. But first let's do the build up. I'm gonna do this chord. Or... Yeah, that sounds cool. Now, I think, tension. So we have this here. There we go. Something like that, big and epic. So let's do, let's like first record a palm you thing. Cool. So let's do another take. Awesome as well. Let's go to the right. And let's do the last one on the right. So like I said before, we have four thick guitars, wall of sound. Yeah, there we go. And then everything smashes together into oblivion. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I like that lead sound, like the like in the blue you can see. And I think that lead should stay there for the chorus or at least at least in the build up also let's see outside i like it just going to record it yeah cool okay so let's do the same thing for L right. That part. Let's 
go into a big epic mode and it has to be like a cool melody but I think I want to do something with 8-bit for the big melody thing. But let's first do the chorus. I'm just going to do something off the top of my head. That's it. That's it for me. I'm just going to duplicate this because I'm not sure how many measures that is. So duplicate this part. It's twice as long. I'm not sure how long I need, but I'm just going to record this idea. I don't want to lose it. Don't want to record lead and guitar at the same time. So we have this right here. Cool, it needs some bass, because the bass, oh my, is so important, so important in the mix. So let's go. So we have this note, this, then it goes to that one, and then we have D, C sharp. And let's play twice, but on the second round we do something different. Play. And then we go to F. Let's listen to that whole thing. I have the right notes. All right, so I really like where this is going. I want to add that lead thing. Like. Something like that. Perhaps this is too high. Sounds better. Set off. Because we already did like high notes. Before the chorus, now perhaps go low. I'm gonna try a couple of things. What did I do? I'll figure it out. Just go by the feel. Here we go. Do the second one. Cool. That air, the air, that layer adds so much because when I play this, awesome. Check out, check check this out. Ah, 
awesome. So now I want to add like a melody line, but something with like an 8-bit kind of thing. So um, let me think. Okay, so what I'll first do is I'm going to duplicate this track, then remove what's on there. So we still have left and right over here, so left and right guitars. I'm going to make this called Solo, see? And I'm first going to try to come up with a melody line, and then later on I'm going to try to like emphasize or thicken it up with a synth or something. So I'm just going to try to come up with a melody. Something like that. That sounds cool, right? That's it. I have to record that now. Okay, so I like that. So I'm gonna do the second half because I like the first half. I really like that, I've, because I, I really want to play it laid back. Uh, okay. So we have that idea, and I'll mix it in a bit better later. But now I'm going to try to double it with a synthesizer. I'm thinking 8-bit or something. So I'm... Okay, let me first just wrap up the... like an outro or something. Let's, let's do this again. And then a cool thing could be is that when it ends, there's like... A tempo shift, not like like BPM wise, but drum wise. So this goes on for uh, well, like one round. I think this could be cool. So something like this. And then instead of hi-hat... Like a China. Like this is what's called China. 
No, crashes. And then an ending, like ba da da da. That to get with kicks and like a low tom. And to make it a bit more human, I'm not gonna do it exactly on the beat, kind of off, I like that. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just gonna record those last hits and then I'm gonna go like into the synth. So let's see. That, and then the same thing on guitars. Okay, and to speed up the process, I think we can just record it four times. So since I recorded the other ones before it actually, I can cut that off and just drag them to the point where it actually happens. So the one too many, this can remove over here. Right. Okay, so we now have. Awesome. Let's clean this up a tiny bit. Awesome, cool. All right, so I'm done with my guitar stuff. And now I want like inspired to add like something synth, perhaps like 8-bit kind of stuff. So let's dig into that. All right, so I'm gonna add like an instrument, I don't know, something 8-bit-like. So I have something cool for that. Uh, let's see. Something like that, perhaps? Maybe that could even be cool, just that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that sounds cool. So I'm just gonna double my lead, like my, my main solo. So I'm gonna give this a different color. It's easy to see. So, what did I play there? Uh, let me see. Something like that, right? a good keyboard player so I'm gonna just program those notes. Something 
All right, so I'm I'm just playing is being played twice. I'm gonna double that. And perhaps it would be cool to do like a harmony on the second time. So it's gonna be. Let me just figure that out. Cool, I like that, it's simple but effective. So now I'll go a bit into the mixing. All right, so from top to down, I'm gonna give this, like this Nintendo thing, an, uh, I call it synth, just like that. And I'll make this into a group. So what that means, I can group these two tracks into like a lead group. So everything I do on here affects both of these. And let me think, I think I'll even blend these two together, which I don't normally do, but I really think they suit well together. So I'll try to treat them uh, together as well. So I'll call this solo and synth. Cool. All right, so, but before I'm gonna blend this in, I'm gonna turn this all the way down and focus first a bit on the bass guitar like mixing wise. Okay, I like how the bass guitar sounds. It's nice and thick. It could use a bit less of this frequency. Like a really wooliness. Cool, I like that. So now I'll go into the, gu the guitar, just like so, and use some EQ. So first I'm gonna filter up everything I don't need. So when you listen closely, you can hear that the fundamental of the guitar, the tone, is around the mid. But over here, that really subby low, I don't need that. That's, that's room for the kick drum, so I'm gonna take that away. The guitars don't sound too bright to me, so I don't really have to filter off everything around the high end. So listen closely and you hear like a really like woof, woof, woof kind of sound. I'll solo it just for now. So that's really something I don't really need. I'm gonna take that down a tiny bit. And I think there could be some cutting away from the mid. and add some upper mids. So I'm showing it now so you can hear it, but normally I just listen it in context. So this is, when I take it away, it's a more metal sound, and when I put it on, it's more like a modern rock sound. Because of the mids, this is where the tone is in my opinion. 
So now the last thing I'll do is I use a multi-band compressor, which basically when I palm eat my guitars, there's a big spike like in the lower mids. Like when I do those those palm mutes, look, look to the way for me, you can see like it go up. Now over here there's like like it takes over the mix. So what this basically does when I click here, it basically ducks down those frequencies when I do the palm mute, so it stays nice and even. And that solves it. Okay, so now we have that lead come in, and I like to add some reverb and delay on my guitar lead. So I have a reverb here, and I have a delay here. When you take a listen, that's a bit too much perhaps. So without it, so a tiny bit of that. And I filter up everything that I don't need. See how it sounds? Now to make some room for that stuff, so Everything, like all the guitars go through this channel. So if I mute this channel, all guitars are muted. When I lower the volume, that means all this are muted. So when a lead comes in, I like to turn those guitars a tiny bit down so there's more room for this. So if I would exaggerate that, just exaggerate, I would never lose in the mix. But to give an example, that's it. So I'm just gonna do the tiny bit Now there's a lot of stuff coming in the chorus, right? So I'm gonna keep those guitars there because I still get that slam like boom, the chorus begin, begins because of this is over here and this gets added and we have this lead thing here later on. So I'll keep this like this. You know what? I think that with this part I can do like Dun 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 something like that. So I'm gonna move this a bit more up, and then I'll do a kick here, and a kick here, and do two snares over there. Basically that. Here we go. Now to make a bit more room for the melody, I'm like just when that melody begins, which is over here, I'm gonna lower the volume just a tiny bit. So just like so. So it makes room for the melody because the melody is the most important thing at that point. So I'll solo the, the solo and the synth. So again, I filter off stuff I don't need. Now because I play very high, I don't need that really low rumble of the lead, but I do need the mids over here. Like without it. So it makes really pop in the mix. Right? And I also need some, some depth. 
So same as the leads, I'm gonna add some delay and reverb, just like so. See how it sounds. <laughs> A cool trick you can do is, ah, oh, what's it called again? I think it's called Micro Shift. That is a cool trick to make something sound a bit more wide. But that's exaggerated. So now everything's in center, but this is like a cool trick which spreads it out. But when I blend it, Makes it sound a bit more in your face. Cool, all right, so to wrap this up, let's listen to the whole thing. Here we go. I like it. I like how that sounds. So, major thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something and hopefully it inspired you music-wise or in any creative form-wise. But basically, hope, hopefully, I, I hope you liked the video. So, my name is Mendel. I'm a composer and a mixing engineer from the Netherlands. Really hope for the hundredth time I'm saying this, but really hope you liked this video and see you next time. Okay, cheers. <laughs>